This call is now being recorded. Excellent. This call is now being transcribed. Excellent. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining today. Uh, my name is Chris Betcher. Uh, thanks for joining for this um, third part of our webinar series called Understanding Google Workspace for Education Plus. Uh, where we dig into some of the uh, more advanced features of the plus edition of Google Workspace. Uh, today we're, we're uh, running a session called Guiding Deeper Learning uh, and it's all about academic integrity and we're primarily going to be talking about uh, the um, <coughs> pardon me, originality reports but I will also touch on a couple of other things that are new inside Google Classroom that are only available in the plus edition. So with that little preamble done, uh, just first of all, acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands upon which we meet. Uh, I'm in Parramatta today, and I'm not sure if this is still Gadigal country, but it's definitely Eora Nation. Um, but uh, regardless, I'd like to recognize the traditional owners whose customs have nurtured and continue to nurture this land and honor the presence of the ancestors who reside in the imagination of the land. Um, this is our Google for Education team, and I see Jay Atwood just jumped into the call as well. So hi, Jay. Thanks for joining. Um, but that's that's the Google for Education team, primarily based in Sydney, with the exception of Steve, who's over in New Zealand, and Kimberly and Chris Hart, who are down in Melbourne. Um, but we look after all of Australia and New Zealand. Uh, as I said, this is part of a series of webinars we're running. Uh, we've done two already. We did the Engage from Anywhere, where we talk mainly about Google Meet. Uh, last week, uh, Richard Johnson joined to talk about advanced security and some of the features you have in the Plus Edition. Uh, today, we'll talk about uh, the Guiding Deeper Learning and, again, primarily originality reports. Uh, next week, we'll be talking about data telling stories and how you can be using the data export feature inside um, the Plus Edition to export data out and then analyze that data in BigQuery. And then the final week called Work Smarter, I'm going to be going through all the different um, there's a whole bunch of plus features that are kind of scattered throughout workspace. There's a few things in Drive, and there's a few things in uh, Docs, and a few things in Sheets and things that are exclusive to the plus edition. So we'll be unpacking all of those uh, sort of more or less random features uh, and laying them out for you. Um, so, oh, I should also point out too that this uh, webinar series has been primarily put together for our good friends in uh, both CENET, the uh, Catholic Education Network, and the Melbourne Archdiocese of Catholic Schools because many of those dioceses have recently moved to the plus edition. So we just want to make sure that uh, they're across many of the new things that have available to them. All right, so let's just talk about the um, originality reports. So it is a feature inside Google Classroom generally. So even in the free fundamentals edition of Classroom, you do have access to originality reports, but it is limited in the number that you can run uh, so when you move to the Plus Edition, you not only get unlimited use of the originality reports, but you also get another feature called Class Matches, uh, or sorry, School Matches, I think it's called, it's the correct name. Um, and it is, um, well, we'll unpack it as we go through, but it's an additional feature we'll, we'll talk about in a sec. Um, the originality reports use, uh, the, well, the power of Google Search, and they, uh, they use that technology to actually um, uh, make sure that students have access to academic integrity at their end. And I know there's a lot of other uh, products that do plagiarism checking. Um, I think where ours differs greatly is that it tries to put the ability to check for that plagiarism directly into the students' hands and encourage the students to take responsibility for that work. So it's not about catching students out when they plagiarise, it's about giving them the tools to learn to be better at not plagiarising. Uh, that's the key difference. So some of the things that help students turn in their best work there, um, we, we give them uh, ideas for scanning their work for recommended citations before they turn it in. So if a student tries to submit work um, before they have actually run a check on it, it will suggest to them that maybe they should do that. Um, like I said, it's about giving students the tools to catch that unintentional plagiarism. Sometimes students just don't realise how much they've actually taken from the internet um, without summarising and um, you know, putting it in their own words and whatnot. Uh, and it also helps students learn how to cite outside sources properly. In terms of how, how it helps teachers, um, obviously it will flag plagiarised work. Uh, so that's helpful uh, for a teacher to know. Um, and it does that by comparing the student work against literally hundreds of billions of web pages uh, and more than 40 million books. And it does that with one single click. Uh, and it just looks after it for you. It's quite amazing what it actually does when you realise what it's doing. Um, uh, it also provides you with a printable 
<coughs> pardon me, originality report, um, which I think a lot of people aren't aware is there, so we'll have a bit of a look at that. Um, and it just makes the grading process, I think, a whole lot more streamlined. Um, the Workspace Plus edition of originality reports, uh, in the standard fundamentals free edition of Workspace, you can do five assignments per class. Now, just to clarify that, so uh, an originality check, when you set an assignment for a student, you have the option of turning on an originality check for that specific piece of work. So it might be an essay, say, and you turn it on, but there might be other pieces of work that are you know, not mission critical, let's say, and you don't have to, uh, quote, waste an originality check on those sorts of pieces of work. Um, with the plus edition, you actually get unlimited use of those originality reports. So you could you could originality check every single thing you ever give the students if you wanted to. Probably don't need to go that far, but you could. Um, the other big thing that you get with the plus edition is what's called the uh, school matches. And it's about setting up a private school owned repository that scans for student to student matches. So what that means is when a student plagiarizes an essay from the internet, Yes, originality reports will pick that up and it will actually check their work against billions of web pages. And if it finds uh, passages that have been taken and not not um, not summarised in any way, it'll flag those. But it will also flag it against a school-owned repository. So if a student hands in the same essay or a very similar essay to, say, what their older brother handed in two years ago when they were in Year 10, uh, it will flag that as well because as every student contributes their work for assessment, their work goes into the repository. And over time, that repository builds into a large collection. Uh, and of course, if you're in a single school, uh, that's useful. If you're in a di diocesan level or across the whole system, I think it becomes even more useful as well because it's actually comparing against other schools as well. So you have that option and we'll unpack that a little bit for you and show you how that works. There are a couple of other things uh, that are not originality report related, but they are classroom features and they are only available in Workspace Plus. One of them is practice sets, which technically is still in beta, so you may not have access to this just yet unless you're on the beta program. The practice sets is kind of like a smart AI driven uh, quiz module. Um, we're, and unlike a Google Form, say, where a teacher can create a quiz and put the correct answers in there and you know, even you can even have the self-marking with a quiz uh, done in Google Forms. The difference with practice sets is the AI powers a lot of it. So the AI will actually do things like suggest uh, resources to students if they need help, if they're stuck on a problem, it'll give them suggestions on how they might move forward. Um, and it will give some sort of analysis afterwards on a class level. And again, I'll show you that in just a sec. The uh, other thing that's available in Plus is what's called classroom add-ons. So we know that you know, there are many tech companies out there doing some amazing things. Uh, it's not just Google. And so uh, we want to work with a lot of these other tech partners. So they can now publish what's called an add-on and an administrator can choose to install that add-on or pre-install that add-on into the domain and make that available to teachers within the domain. Now, obviously, if admin chooses not to install certain add-ons, then they won't be available. So uh, it's entirely up to the, the uh, system administrators as to what's available and what's not. Um, but assuming they've made stuff available, teachers can then uh, use those uh, third party tools uh, to push out to students directly inside Classroom. So it uses the same login, there's no need for an additional login, it uses the same authentication as Classroom users. Um, <coughs> and it puts that tool directly inside Classroom. So instead of sending students out to other web pages or other tabs and they end up in that situation with lots of tabs across their browser, everything is happening inside the classroom interface. So it makes things a lot simpler and a lot easier. And of course, if you set an assignment using any of these add-ons that you plan on grading, the grading process will also operate inside classroom as well. So it's a nice thing and I'll, I'll try and just give you a little glimpse into that. Um, there is one other thing in classroom uh, on the plus edition that I haven't really listed here because it kind of gets into the techie area, but it is the ability to uh, synchronize classroom with your student information system. So you're populating classrooms with students uh, and classes and teachers and everything else based on your SIS data. Uh, 
it needs to be set up, obviously, and there's there's a little bit uh, we could probably talk about about how you do that, uh, but probably a little bit outside the scope of what we're talking about today. But just be aware that that does exist, the ability to synchronise to your SIS. And a little bit further down the track is coming the ability to synchronise your gradebook back to the SIS. So everything flows back and forward between your school information system and classroom. Um, this is just a little glimpse of practice sets that I mentioned. You can see when students do practice sets for a start, it allows them to use handwriting, to have little scratch pads where they can work out their problems. Uh, it is particularly good at the moment at mathematics type problems because um, uh, a lot of the back-end resources have so far been coded in there, a lot of mathematics stuff. But the intention is to grow it out to cover all sorts of areas as well across all sorts of subjects. You'll see up in the top uh, left corner there, it says insights. One of the things the AI does is after you've assigned these practice sets to students, the AI will, as you can see there, it's telling you, you know, five students got number seven incorrect. Well, that's a useful piece of information for a teacher to know. Maybe the question was too hard. Maybe it hadn't been taught properly. Uh, but it's, it's a good insight. And it's also identified two students there that are particularly struggling with, with specific problems. Um, so it's a nice little summary piece that, that teachers can use as a kind of a you know, diagnostic uh, and almost like an AI tutor helper. Uh, it's, it's pretty useful. Uh, if you want to learn anything more about originality stuff, that's the address you should look at, edu.google.com slash products slash originality and you'll find a whole bunch of stuff that we're talking about today on that website. All right, let's jump into a little product tour and I will show you a bit more of what I actually mean. So I'm gonna go out to, first of all, let me, let me show you a couple of things. So I'm gonna go out to, uh, I'll go here first of all. So you'll notice if I go into my shared drives, so I have set up, the administrator needs to set this up. This is the school corpus or the school matches that I mentioned where um, student work can be compared against previous student work. So there is, um, it, it's not difficult to set up. It's a couple of check boxes uh, and creating, making, making sure people are in the correct groups. But once that's done, it creates this thing called an originality corpus as a shared drive. So this gets created and then, now this is a, a, this is a sample account that I use for demonstrating things. So there's not a lot of things in here because obviously this is not a real school we're looking at. But you can see that these pieces of work all across the top here, in fact, if I go into the 2022 folder for that particular class, these are pieces of work that have been submitted by students uh, in an attempt to submit work through Classroom. And when they submit it in Classroom, a copy of it automatically goes here into the originality corpus. And any subsequent things will get flagged against the originality corpus, as well as the open internet. So that's what that looks like. In terms of how you actually do it, let's, this, I've jumped into Google Classroom here and you can see I've got a demonstration class, which is what I'll use. And so I'm just going to jump in here and show you how you would, first of all, set up a, an original task. So uh, as always with Classroom, if I want to set up an assignment, I go to assignments and I give it a name. So I'm just going to call this um, essay task. Whatever you like, you put your instructions there and so on. By the way, this is where you see the practice sets logo. I'll come back and show you that in just a moment. And this is where you find the add-ons. I've gone a bit crazy with this particular domain and added a whole bunch of add-ons. You can obviously choose which one specifically you want. But there's a few interesting ones in there like Sora, the Overdrive uh, app. And I know a lot of our dioceses use Sora. Uh, so that could be interesting, worth looking at. Um, but other things like WeVideo, oops, click on that. Uh, we video, Edpuzzle, uh, Google Play Books, Adobe Express, um, Arts and Culture. There's there's a whole bunch of things in there that teachers very commonly use. And now they're integrated directly into Classroom. Okay, so uh, coming back to setting up this task here, I, I can choose, you know, if it belongs to a certain category. Maybe this is uh, classwork. And it's worth, uh, let's just say this task is worth 20 points. And it's going to be due next week sometime. Okay, so I, I, I make all the usual choices. Give it a topic on uh, originality checks. And to enable the originality check, all the teacher has to do, if they decide that this is an assignment that they want to have checked for plagiarism, they simply tick that box. That's it. That's all they have to do. They tick that box. Now, once they tick that box, it puts a whole bunch of back-end processes into place, which now we'll look at. So I'm going to assign that task to... Uh, 
I've got a bunch of students in here. The only one that I've currently enabled is Crystal. So the others I haven't turned on the licensing for. So, so this task will only be relevant to Crystal. So let, let's just have a look and see. So I'll assign that to everybody. But just be aware only Crystal will get the ability to uh, do the originality check because you need a license for every student that you want to be able to use the service. And that's the way we sell Workspace Plus on a, on a student number basis. Okay, so I've uh, sent that out. There it is there, it's called SA task. Um, so what I'd like to do is uh, just go over here to drive. So I'm going to hit my drive. I have got, uh, just for such an occasion, I have got some sample essays, okay? So I've just got a couple of sample essays here that I will use as an example. Now, some of these essays are interesting. In fact, you know what? I'm going to use this one here. I'll tell you why this is a great example. This essay, I, I wanted some sample essays that I could use to demonstrate. So I actually put a message out on Twitter last week and I said, if anyone has any student work that they would be prepared to uh, share with me, anonymously, of course, um, that uh, we could use for demonstration. And so I was given this one to use. Um, so I won't mention where it came from or who it is. It's not relevant. But uh, you can see it's, it's a nice essay. This is actual student work that was actually handed in. Now, what I'd like to do, I'm going to copy this work. So I'm select it all. Sorry, let me just clean it up a bit. That'll do. Okay, so I'm going to copy all that work and okay, Control C, and then I will open an incognito window and I will log in as a student. Right, so bear with me just one second here. So I'm just going to sign into Classroom as a student because it's important you see the teacher and the student view here. So this student's name is Crystal Ball at chrome4edu.com and Crystal's password is... You didn't really think I was going to tell you then, did you? So there you go. So there is the student logging in. Oh, joy of joys. Okay. Uh, you get to see my phone number now. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Um, right. Okay, it's going to send me that message, which hopefully will arrive on my phone. There it is. Zero, zero, eight. Sorry, I should have signed into this earlier. All right. Okay, so I am now logged in here as the student, and if, this, if I come in here to the demonstration class as the student, and I click on the classwork page, you will see that there is the task that's just beside me, the one called SA task. So what I want to do is this is what the student would do. So the student's been assigned this task, they come in here, they view the assignment, they've been asked, I haven't written the instructions down here, but the instructions would have been something like, you know, write your essay on the history of Christianity versus blah, whatever the question might be, right? And then the student can either attach a piece of work that they have in their Google Drive. So they click on the Add button here, and they can either go to their Google Drive and attach it, or they can create a new document. Let's just say the student's creating a brand new document here. So it creates a Google Doc for the student. There it is, opens up. And I'm just going to take that text that I copied from before. I'm just going to paste it in there like that. Okay, so there is the text that this student has, quote, written, all right? Um, so obviously, they've spent some time doing that. Now, I'm just going to close this task. And um, you'll notice that because I ticked that box as a teacher that said originality reports, the student actually sees this little section down here that says originality reports run. And I have a run button. So as the student now, I can check my work before I send it to the teacher. So let's say this is the first draft. I click that run button. It tells me I have three of three report runs available. So a student can run this report three times. And you would typically do it at the end of the first draft. You do it after some teacher feedback and you do it just before you submit it. That would be the typical thing, but they get three bites of this cherry. So I'm gonna hit the run button. It will then chug away. You can see it's 13% done. And it will just take a moment, 38% done. 
Um, Jay, if you're on this call, I am monitoring this on my phone, but I can't see the chat. So if you see any chat messages come up, could you unmute and let me know? Any questions? Assuming Jay's still here. All right, um, so you can see that that's done now. The originality report is done. It was done at 16.06, that's 4.06. And if I want to see what it looks like, I click that button and it actually flags 13 passages here. And you can see all that gray area is where stuff's been flagged. Now, that's not good. <laughs> like I said, this was a real student essay. Uh, and if I look at the percentage here, you can see it is actually 78% flagged content. Uh, and if I can turn on the, the amount of cited stuff, it shows me where things have been cited from, but not including the citations it's actually found 78% of this essay has been lifted directly from somewhere else. Now, why is that worrying? Well, obviously you don't want that. Uh, I thought this was particularly interesting because this is actually student work. And I do wonder if the teacher, when they got it the first time, whether they actually realized that it was uh, quite so um, borrowed from elsewhere. So you can see that. Now, if I, if I wonder, well, where did this paragraph here come from? I simply click on it. It opens up this passage on the side here, and this is what I wrote, and this is what's on the internet that is worded very similarly, and it actually tells you the website that that came from. So this is the 11th of 13 passages. I can go back and look at the 10th, I can go back and look at the 9th, and so on. So each one of those passages directly stolen from the internet. And again, this is real student work. Now, if I go back over here and look at this little print icon in the top corner, it actually gives me a printable summary that I can save as a PDF, or print obviously, um, and it gives me a complete summary of this work, which I find is useful. This is a particularly plagiarized piece of work here, so um, you probably wouldn't normally get so many pages in this report. This is a seven page report. Uh, let's hope you get no more than a couple of pages. Um, but that's how this works. So it's, it's run that check there. And uh, if that student then, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to actually save that, or I could, that's all that. Um, so uh, that's how the original edit sheet works. You can see I've got the button at the bottom here where I can hit the edit button, and it will allow me to then go back and open that document up again, and hopefully encourage me to then go and fix up some of these mistakes. All right, so that's what the student sees, simply by the teacher ticking that box that says originality reports. Let's close out of here and let's assume that that student for now has decided, eh, I don't care, good enough, I'm just gonna hand it in anyway, right? So they hand it in and it's saying, this is gonna be handed in, yes, we wanna do that. So it's now taking that piece of student work, submitting it, it's been originality checked by the student. Let's go back to the teacher view, clicking over here. Okay, so teacher view. Let's jump into classroom. As the teacher now, I come into my essay task and I can see that one student has currently done it and that's the student we just looked at. So let's view that assignment and see what we get. So, okay, here we go. So I can see that Crystal Ball has handed this in and all my other students have not yet handed it in. Okay, uh, well, let's have a look at Crystal's work. So I click on this. It takes me to similar kind of uh, the grading screen that I would normally get in classroom where I can use the commenting tool to leave featured, uh, leave um, comments to students and so on. But up in the corner, you'll notice it says 13 flag passages. Now, as a teacher, I haven't run the originality report. All, I, <coughs> all I've done is enable it for this task. Um, even if the student did not run the originality report, I would still get a note here to tell me there are flag passages because it will run it for me in the background anyway. So I'm curious now, this student, hmm, if like passages here, so now I see the same originality report that the student saw, even if I didn't request it, it's just available to me. So obviously uh, that's not a good thing, and then we would go into our usual dance of uh, speaking to the student and talking about academic integrity and so on. Now had that essay existed somewhere else inside the uh, corpus, it would also have shown me that, that certain passages were flagged from there as well. 
So I'll just pause for a moment and just see if anyone has any questions. Let's come over here. So nothing in the chat there. Um, Sorry, Chris. Can I can I just ask a question about that? Because sure, I know I've know I've been subject to this for four years in a university, and mm -hmm. and I've often wondered the question, particularly as it relates to Google. You know, if you think about some of our recent songwriters who have been go heading to court for plagiarism, right? At what point is there no sentence that has never been ever <laughs> before? Like, given that you're Google and you're doing what you're doing, and even yeah. student work, if you think about student combinations, the likelihood of a student, at what point does this mathematically doesn't actually make sense anymore? Yeah, it's a good question, Milton. Um, I, I have done some. I, I've done quite a few tests with this because I'm curious about the same thing. Um, one of the things I did was to uh, just write a dummy essay. Actually, let me see if I can find it. Um, it was called "Best City in the World." Best City in the World. Uh, that's a piece of student work, so I don't want to do something I've already checked because obviously it will flag it. Um, Probably this one. So this is just a little. Oh no, that's that's not a good example because that's just a blank piece of paper. Maybe it's this one. <laughs> At some point, I logged in as each one of these students pretending to be a student just so I could have some sample data. Um, so this one, for example, is a combination of things that have been lifted from the internet and my own work. Uh, what I've found is that if if you Take a piece of writing and you intersperse it with original writing and borrowed writing. Uh, the originality you check very clearly picks up the stolen bits and leaves your own original work alone, which I thought was as, ex you know, as expected. That's what I'd wanted it to do. Um, but I haven't found it having a problem with genuinely original work at all. Uh, it would be interesting to run some tests and I'd encourage that if that's something you think is interesting to do. The other thing that I found was interesting, and I wonder if I can just do it here. Uh, I guess on the back of that, Chris, the, I guess the other question that I've got is, I, it, we've been in this thing now, I think, since, oh, I can't remember, something around 2008 maybe. Yep, yep. All the work that's sitting in our Google Drives right now, is it including that? Uh, it wouldn't because uh, the, the original ID corpus probably didn't exist at that time, but you can import it in. So you can actually populate that originality corpus, which is just a folder inside um, a shared drive. Uh, you can populate that with whatever you want. So if you want to take a whole bunch of backdated student work and drop it in there, that now becomes um, something that it checks against. Right. Okay. Thank you. That's all right. No worries. Here's the other interesting thing. And I don't know where this is. <laughs> Let me see if I can demonstrate this. Uh, it's kind of difficult to demonstrate, but if I just go to uh, AI um, uh, summarize, AI summarization, right, free, let's try this one. So there's a number of tools now there that will summarize, and I think the, the sort of the one most people will know about is this one called Quillbot. So if you take a piece of writing and paste it into Quillbot, it will spit out a summarized version of it. It all now, and this was something I heard a, an AI researcher from a university recently, who was quite concerned about this new trend where students are basically creating essays that are essentially plagiarized, but then taking it to an AI summarization tool, summarizing it into different words, and then submitting that, and um, the particular. Uh, plagiarism tool that they were using was not picking up the AI summarized work, which is obviously a huge concern for academic integrity. What's interesting, it, that doesn't work in every single case. It depends on how well the summarization was done. But in most of the cases that I've personally tried with the summarized AI versions, strangely and interestingly, um, originality reports were still flagging it which I, don't, I have no idea how that works because it's literally different words, but it's it's flagging it as being non-original writing. So I think this is, I guess, early days in this kind of thing to explore, but um, for me, I was impressed with the fact that originality reports 
does tend to leave genuinely original writing alone, does tend to flag stuff that is genuinely plagiarised, and is even pretty good at flagging stuff which is AI summarised. So, um, like I said, early days, we probably need to do more experiments around that because I only sort of learnt about this summarisation thing recently, but um, I just thought it was interesting that it still works. All right. Uh, let, does anyone have any questions about that, what I've just shown you there? Okay. And uh, look, I guess the the uh, the where am I going here? Uh, you know, I guess the uh, originality report stuff is not new. If you've been using Classroom for a while, I mean, it's been there for quite a while now, a number of years. Uh, and essentially works exactly as it's always worked. I guess the difference for the plus edition is you now have unlimited use of it. You don't have to restrict yourself to the five uh, uses per classroom, which could get a bit restrictive. Uh, and you also get the school matches as well. So that's that's the sort of the big deal with the, um, the originality reports. Now, uh, if we have, how we go for time? We have uh, probably a few minutes left. So I'm just gonna show you if you'll allow me to, the uh, an example of the, um, uh, the practice sets. So I'm just going here now. Again, this is not released yet, so this is beta, um, but it's also not a secret. So I've got an example here called algebra practice, and you can see uh, there's a practice set attached to it. Now, where these practice sets come from, uh, once this is enabled for your domain, you'll find up in the three dashes in the top corner, there's a new menu item here called Practice Sets. So a teacher can go into Practice Sets and just let it load for a moment. And you essentially create a practice set in the same way that you might create a quiz, um, but it's reusable. So once you create it in here, it becomes something that you can use over and over again. So I'll just give you an example. I've got this one called Algebra and Maths. And if I go in here, uh, there are just a few questions in here that are kind of algebraic style questions. Uh, and one of, the, one of the nice things about this is um, there is the ability to see what this looks like as a student. I know that's a hugely popular request with Classroom that teachers are often saying, I wish I could see Classroom the way the student sees it. Uh, so it is a feature request and we, we are listening to that, but we haven't been able to provide that to everyone yet. But in practice sets, you do have the ability to see it as the student sees it. So. Um, in order to create a question, I'll just give you a, a little snapshot into that. If I hit the edit button up here, it will open this up for editing. You can see this is kind of, if you've used Google Forms before, it probably looks very familiar, but to create a new question, you tap the new question button here. You have a number of question types, short answer, paragraph, single select, multi-select, and so on. Uh, and you can write your question here. So, um, uh, oh no, let's do two X plus, sorry. What I want to do is do math stuff. So I need to click on this math answer board here. I go 2x plus, I don't know, 4 equals I don't know, 10. Oh, I'm not a math teacher. Right, we'll just do that, right? What's the answer there? So uh, the answer is 3. Someone can confirm. I think 2 times 3 plus 4 equals 10. Yep. Uh, good. So there's the question. If I did want to write something a bit more complicated than that and I needed sort of fractional signs or whatever, there is a little maths keyboard there that I can click on and it will. So click on that, and it will pop up a maths keyboard so I can do things like, you know, limits and integrals and square roots and all the rest of it. So, so that's relatively easy to set up. Uh, and then once you do that, you then say, oh, sorry, I did that wrong, didn't I? That's actually the question. I'm a duffer. Let me do that again. Sorry, 2x plus 4 equals 10. That's actually the question. And this down here, this should be the answer. The answer we said was three. Okay, right, sorry, my mistake. Now the interesting thing about this is this is linked back to a whole bunch of curriculum. Uh, right now, it doesn't explicitly include the Australian curriculum, but the good thing is with things like maths, I mean, it's fairly universal. So, you know, algebra is algebra pretty much everywhere in the world. So what you can do here is to say search for skills and I think if I type algebra, so this is what I want to do, and it does take a moment to think about it. Remember, we are still in beta, so this is 
uh, still early days on this. So there you go. So when you type in a keyword, it will actually search through the database to find resources that might support the thing you're trying to do. So in this case, it's uh, we're solving basic algebraic expressions and equations. So that's exactly what I want. And you'll notice when I enable that, this little yellow light bulb lights up here uh, to tell me that this has a hint attached to it. So that's how you add a question. Um, I will, uh, I've added it, I might as well leave it there. So I've done editing. And to show you how the student would use it, I'm just going to click on this try as a student. And remember, what I would do in classroom, I would go into create an assignment and I would simply attach a practice set in the same way that you currently attach a Google Doc. Uh, and that practice set becomes attached to the assignment and gets pushed out to all the students. And here's where it gets cool. This is like, uh, so this first question, how many sides does a triangle have, right? Well, I can see there's a hint attached to it. So if I click on the hint, it brings up a little video and this little video will play, and I'm sure this video is something about trying. So not quite the three sides. It's as simple as three sides, but I can either I can either type in the number three here, and when I do that, you'll notice that it will right, press enter. It says checking, and if I've got the correct answer, it says three, and I get a little dance. Tell me I'm correct. If I was to put the wrong answer in there, uh, so if I, can I get rid of that now? No, oh, no, I think once I get it right, you can't correct, you can't edit the correct answers. Okay, but let's go to the next question. So this is 2x plus 6 equals 10. Great. So, you know, let's say I don't know the answer off the top of my head. I need to work it out. I've got a show your work button here that opens up this panel. And in fact, if you've got a stylus on your computer or Chromebook or whatever you're using this on, you can click on that. Uh, and you now have a, a scratch pad. So I can come in here and I can go, okay, well, and I'm just doing this with my finger right now. So I'm uh, trying to, on a second. Click that button, here, okay. 2x plus 6 equals 10. So I can say 2x equals 10 minus 6. 2x equals 4, therefore x equals 2. So now that I know that I can come up here and either type or write the number 2 into that square, and it's recognized my terrible handwriting as a two. So when I hit the check button, it actually will tell me whether I got that right or wrong. So it's, it's said, okay, green, you got that right. So using practice sets, essentially the teachers, teacher can create these practice sets of questions and then assign them out to students. And then the grading and marking and hint suggesting on all of these uh, lives right here inside the practice set. Let's say I didn't know how to solve that. You see there's a hint attached to this one. If I click on the hint, it will open up on the side there. And sometimes these hints take a moment to load. There you go. It's loaded. And it's it's just giving me some information here about how I might solve. It doesn't, it's not specifically for this question. It's in general terms how you solve for an algebraic expression. So, and you assume then that the student can sort of derive the answer from the, the examples that are given. So that's kind of how practice sets work. Um, you can see there's other questions in here and they, they work exactly the same way. Once those are done, I'm just going to dismiss this now. We don't need to continue on. I'll go back to classroom and let me just show you. So that was the practice set that I put into my collection of practice sets. So then as a, uh, as a teacher, if I want to assign one of those sets to students, if I go back to my demonstration class here, I uh, go to classwork, let's say I'm sending out a new piece of work, creating assignment for students, I call this maths quiz, whatever I want to call it. I can go to the practice sets and then it'll open up the practice set collection that I've created in the background, uh, load them all up and then I can pick which of my practice sets I'd like to assign for this particular task and I'll then push it out. Now, once it pushes it out, every student gets a copy, hopefully the students do the work, uh, so I won't proceed with this. I'm just going to cancel out of here because I want to show you a finished one. Uh, this is what you would get is something like this, so algebra practice. So again, if I go and view the assignment, you'll see it opens up this page. It tells me all these students, you know, most have handed it in, a couple have not, and I can see on the side there. But what's interesting up here is this class insights. When I click on the class insights, it opens up a kind of analysis page here, and this is where it shows me loads, it shows me up here on the insights, 
what screen grab I showed you before, where it says, well, five students got number seven incorrect. Okay, it's good to know. Uh, Walter Mellon and Bud Light, they're struggling with many problems. Okay, so I need to go and see these two students, maybe address that question. If I click on a number here, it will open up that problem or that question over in this right-hand panel, and I can actually see the what. So this is Crystal's attempt. Uh, here is Artie's attempt, and I can actually see every student's attempt, including the handwriting, if they've, re if they've chosen to use handwriting, and I can actually go back and look at how they've approached each of those problems. All right, there you go. I am pretty much on time with three minutes to spare, so we might have a couple of quick questions if anyone has any, but that's how practice sets work. Like I said, in beta at the moment, um, expect, hopefully, like I shouldn't put a date on things, but expect to see it hopefully fairly soon. Um, it's it's reasonably stable at the moment. Um, we just put some finishing touches on it. All right, uh, I am going to go back to our slides. I just remind you that if you want more information on the originality report stuff, that is the address you should be jumping over to is edu.google.com slash product slash originality. And uh, if you need anything, that's my email address there, betcha at google.com. Feel free to reach out to me if you've got any questions. I'm happy to answer them. Um, and uh, other than that, you'll find lots of help in the help center. And with that, I will say thank you. I appreciate your time today. Uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Um, if you'd rather ask off the record, happy to stop the recorder and you can hang around for a few minutes and ask them then. Hey, Chris, uh, just a question from me. Um, I think the practice sets show a lot of yeah um, potential, particularly yep. the insights. Um, I was just wondering, um, I know you said it would be released soon. Is there anywhere to join the practice sets beta at the moment? The beta is only... closed at the moment, Camille. Yep. We did... We did uh, um, we actually had the New York team, which is building practice sets. Uh, they actually came out to Australia, I think it was about two, a month and a half ago, two months ago, and um, they actually did some beta testing with some Australian schools, including, I think, uh, a school from Wollongong, a school from Sydney, if I recall correctly. Um, uh, and, and, and they actually sort of went into classrooms and watched students use it. And they got a lot of, a lot of really great feedback. Uh, I think sometimes our teams in the US build things that uh, don't always take perspective of uh, non-US users. So it was really great that they did come out and do that, both in Australia and New Zealand. And I know they got a lot of great feedback on it as well, the things that they didn't expect. So um, I think that probably delayed the, the release a little bit because I think they wanted to go back and rethink a couple of things. Oh, okay, fair enough. And um, just if you'd know off the top of your head, um, would practice sets be enable enabled via um, uh, OUs, or is it just a organization-wide? Uh, I believe, level? don't quote me on it because I'm not 100% sure, but I do believe, I'm fairly certain that it is available to be deployed on an OU basis. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yep. All right, thank you. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, with that, I am going to jump in here and just stop the recorder. Um, here, recording, stop the recording.